Hello, good afternoon. My name is Monica Walton and I will be your community leader for this Mass. We welcome everyone to our celebration. Thank you for joining us. Our guidelines require that your mask cover your nose and mouth throughout the entire Mass. There will be no contact during the sign of peace, but please acknowledge each other's presence at this celebration. Thank you. Please stand as we welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. Let us all join together in worship and sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, born to set Thy people free from our fears and sin release us let us find our rest in thee israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom breathe. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to our celebration. Glad you could be here with us. And as we begin, we pause once again and call to mind our need for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that at the coming of Christ your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich foods and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. 
The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the earth, the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we look. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in white paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee. He went up on the mountain and he sat down there, and great crowds came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, and the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking and the deformed made whole and the lame walking and the blind able to see and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where could we ever get enough bread? in this deserted place to satisfy this crowd. And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground, and then he took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full, the gospel of the Lord. Interesting, the uh, reading, the beautiful readings these days that we hear from the prophet Isaiah a whole lot, and many of them have to do with the Lord feeding and nourishing and taking care of and nurturing his people. Isaiah's image in the first reading on this mountain, again, the gathering on the mountain, the Lord's, the place that was perceived in the Old Testament for meeting or encountering the Lord, ascending the mountain and encountering him. Uh, and then he will provide a feast of rich food, choice wines, juicy, rich, and pure choice wines. And on this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. 
The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. Wow, what a beautiful image. You know, when I say is providing this as an encouragement for the people who are coming back from their exile, coming back to re-inherit their own land, to pick up their own place. You know, many of them, hey, they'd been out of their own homeland for 50 years, you know, hadn't seen anything about it. Some of them didn't know anything about it, but they're moving back and the prophet is saying, hey, God is going to raise up a newness, you know. But when they come there, it is dis destroyed. Everything is destroyed. And there's a lot of hard work goes into uh, rebuilding and re-energizing. It doesn't happen. It's not some kind of snap of the fingers and, man, we're back home and everything is good. And it's one of the great realities about the journey, the journey in Christ. You know, we hope for something instantaneous and spontaneous uh, quite often in our lives, but it doesn't happen that way, you know. So we look at the pandemic, you know, what are we learning through it? What are we learning about ourselves? What are we learning about each other? What are we learning about our world, uh, our relationship, our faith, our belief in Christ, you know? And yet the prophet was right on because he was talking about the coming Messiah, you know, and the hopes, the veil that covered all peoples and that uh, keeps people from really being seen, uh, which has some great values in our world, we know, because of the fears and anxieties we have. Um, but the Lord will lift the veil and we'll all be seen and known. And what a great, profound truth that is. And it certainly is a, a challenge and an invitation, but he will wipe away uh, the tears from all faces and the reproach of the people he will remove. Wow, what a hopeful venture indeed. And so the Christ came into the world, lived among us. And interestingly, he did all of those things while he lived among us. Here is a great example in the gospel. You know, the people come, they ascend the mountain to encounter God, to experience the Christ and they have those who are blind and lame and crippled and they bring them all and lay them at his feet and he begins the healing process. You know, what a powerful experience for those people gathered there. And then the empathy of Jesus, you know, which we just don't remember oftentimes. You know, he said to the disciples, hey, um, these folks have been with us for three days, you know. We need to be thinking about giving them something to eat. And the disciples are causing, man, no, no, let's send them on, man. Let them find their own way to food. Uh, a not uncommon phenomenon in our world. And uh, Jesus said, no, no, uh, let's see, what have we got? You know, and uh, it's different to the other recounting in the uh, Matthew chapter 6 and the Eucharistic teaching, you know, the five loaves and the two fishes. Maybe it was another incident. Maybe it was the same incident r recorded again by Luke here, you know. Who cares whether it was five or seven, you know, or two fish or four fish or five fish. The, the message is what was really important. Jesus' com compassion and care for the people that still exists among us despite all of the travesties and all of the pain and suffering and difficulty and obstacles and arguing and fighting and disagreeing. Uh, his empathy and his compassion are still abounding. And uh, the question as we journey through the Advent season, where do we see, where do we experience those? And said to the disciples, what you got? Are you willing to share what you got? You know? Well, it's not enough. Well, that's probably the most common phenomenon in the world and maybe the greatest mistake, you know, that there's not enough, there's more than enough. There is an absolute abundance of the Lord. We just haven't learned how to share it well or share it effectively, but there is an abundance, you know. And so Jesus says, hey, sit down, you all, and... Uh, he blesses and he breaks the Eucharistic uh, expression again. He takes, he blesses, 
He, bra he breaks and distributes, and there's plenty. And that is the story of Eucharist every day. You know, there is plenty. Uh, when do we step into that grace and become a part of that profound mystery and that profound experience ourselves? We step into it, we say, yeah, there's enough. There's more than enough. In fact, they picked up seven baskets after everybody had been fed. There is sufficient, and in these days of Advent, as we journey toward celebrating once again his birth, it's a great message for us, you know, to be renewed in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the civil unrest, in the midst of the issues of racism and care for our brothers and sisters. What a great message. The Christ has come. He lived among them, and he had a great empathy for them and for everybody in need. How am I like him? Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers today as we gather in your name. We ask you to bless us with your healing, your forgiveness, and continue to grow us in your way. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, that through our actions and words we may atone for our sinful ways, especially during this season of watchful expectancy for Christ's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may hear the cries of those in need, the poor, the homeless, the persecuted, and the broken, and see the face of the Lord in their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are burdened with guilt, that they may turn to God and come to realize the boundlessness of God's extravagant forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who receive plenty to eat on Thanksgiving from our generosity, but struggle to feed their families and themselves every other day, that they may be remembered throughout the year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved, faithful, departed brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again, especially the Hare and McNamara families for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Continue praying for all of our brothers and sisters in our parish community who are sick, suffering from any kind of ailment or anguish or fear or worry. We ask you to bless them with your Loving care with that same compassion that you show us in the gospel experience, we pray to you, Lord. Father, all of these, our prayers we bring to you, we ask that you accept and grant them, for we offer them with faith in Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all of your people. And remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. And let us be grateful for that peace and let us acknowledge it to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Let us now join together to sing our communion hymn, 
I have loved you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his joy and his hope. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine <coughs> sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Thank you all for joining us. Glad you could be here. We continue praying with and for each other throughout this time. Our Christmas angel tree contains 118 ornaments requesting the purchase of coats for the children of St. Michael Parish in Forest and Martin. Your generous gift to these children must be returned to the church along with a coated ornament by December 13th. Christmas cards were mailed to the entire parish along with a survey to help us plan for Christmas Masses. Please return this information to us so that we may safely plan for this joyous celebration. Adoration will follow immediately after Mass. Please be seated or kneel if you are staying for adoration. 
If you will be leaving, please remain standing and wait to be dismissed from your pew. We ask that you maintain social distancing as you exit the building. Thank you. Let us now say our Praise him together with our closing song, Ready the Way. Ready the way of the Lord. Ready the way of the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness. Ready the way of the Lord. Let every valley be filled, let every valley be filled, let every mountain be humble, let every valley be filled. Here is your God coming with your vindication. Look and behold. The saving power of God.
Thank you. 